This book is a naturalist field journal. It's called Tasmania, a wildlife journey. And all of the writing and all of the illustrations were done by Joyce Pausick. As a natural scientist, Joyce Pausick was hiking through Tasmania many years ago. This book is a remembrance of her experiences. And although she never got to see one, Joyce dedicated her book to the Tasmanian wolf. The illustration is on this page. This wolf once flourished on the island of Tasmania. When she published this book, Joyce Pausick was working as an artist at Rockefeller University in New York City. Today, Joyce, with her picture here below, is a professor of biology at Wesleyan University in Middletown, Connecticut. Our journey starts in the highlands on a cool, clear day. Even during the spring, storms move into these mountains without warning, and there is a fresh blanket of snow on the ground. Looming in the background are weathered volcanoes. Black currawongs watch us from the rocky outcrops. A family of Tasmanian wombats push the new fallen snow away from the entrance to their sleeping burrow. Little marsupial mice are searching for frozen insects in the drifts. We pass snow gum trees that have grown gnarled and twisted by wind. Their bark is bright against the snow. A copperhead snake is sunning itself on the rocky path that leads us down from the highlands into the grassy savanna. The markings of this poisonous snake make it difficult to spot in the grass. It slithers away and soon disappears. Soaring overhead is a wedge-tailed eagle, closely watching its vast dominion. A pair of Tasmanian echidnas are busy in the tussock grass, catching ants with their long, sticky tongues. Dragonflies patrol the air over large cushion plants that are composed entirely of moss. Two Tasmanian potamelons are feeding in the bush. One has a heavy pouch because she is carrying a baby. She thumps her foot to warn other patamelons of our presence. We continue through the dense scrub and gradually move into woodlands. A Tasmanian native hen walks through the undergrowth, flicking her tail while clucking softly. The sound of gurgling water leads us to a stream that emerges from a rock face to form a small waterfall. As we stop here to rest, welcome swallows swoop by, picking off young insects that have emerged from their larval stage in the stream. A shy Tasmanian betong hops into view. It rises up on its hind legs, sniffing the air for danger. The betong then gathers a clump of dry grass with its forelegs and places the grass in its curled tail. This new bundle will be added to its nest. A noisy group of green rosellas flocks into a blue gum tree. The betong vanishes, frightened by the bird's loud chattering. We follow the stream as it flows into a pond. Several large black swans live here with their young, which are called cygnets. These graceful birds arch their necks as they slowly glide across the water. A water rat catches our attention as it jumps into the pond with a splash. The rat uses its semi-webbed feet to swim after a water beetle. The screeching calls of sulfur-crested cockatoos pierce the silence. The cockatoos fly through a cluster of yuan pine trees on the way to their distant feeding grounds. We spot a small bird colored bright blue and orange, on the far side of the pond. It is an azure kingfisher. The bird dives headfirst into the water, reappearing with a small minnow clamped in its bill. As we walk along, the trees 
suddenly become more numerous and the air feels heavy and damp. The sparse woodlands have given way to thick rainforest. A growling black animal with a white V across its chest is pacing up and down the far stream bank. Snarling, it jumps into the water to retrieve a dead fish. The animal devours food, crunching bones with its strong jaws. This is a Tasmanian devil, a fierce scavenger that also hunts. Ignoring the noisy devil, a group of yellow-tailed black cockatoos quietly feeds on grubs from beneath the bark of eucalyptus trees. A poisonous tiger snake glides across the ground. It is about to raid a nest of beautiful fire tails in the lower tree branches. The rainforest is full of life. Every plant and animal has its own niche. Night is falling and the large tree ferns cast dark shadows. A soft rain begins to fall and its patter echoes throughout the forest. Two musk lorikeets settle down to sleep under a sheltering branch. The night seems peaceful, but some animals have just awakened. A native cat appears, sniffing through the wet leaves for the scent of a mouse or bird. The cat suddenly smells something and dashes off to continue its nightly hunt. A boo-book owl calls from a tree. Over and over, the owl repeats its name. Wonk, 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 boo book, boo book, challenging any other boo buck owl to come near. From our hiding place, we glimpse a barred bandicoot with dark stripes across its rump. It starts to dig up a witchetty grub or beetle larva and is immediately joined by two small bandicoots. The young snatch the food from their mother and eagerly look for more. Darting between the trees, an owlet nightjar flies after a large gum moth. Startled, the bandicoots gallop off into the bush, causing a shower of raindrops to fall. Pygmy possums are moving through the forest. They jump from branch to branch and flower to flower, feeding on the sweet nectar of Tasmanian black peppermint trees. Breaking through the brush comes a tiger cat with spots on its back and tail. The tiger cat is the largest carnivore on Tasmania, except for the Tasmanian wolf, which may be extinct. The cat climbs a nearby tree and easily catches a sleeping parrot. In a burst of feathers and squawks, the other birds fly off to look for a safe roosting area. The approaching dawn colors the sky a light gray. The rain has finally stopped. We pass a cave where lesser long-eared bats are returning from their nightly hunt for insects. Also returning is a ring-tailed possum with a young one clinging to her back. The possum's curled tail grasps the smaller branches and helps support her heavy load as she climbs to her nest. Hidden in the bushes are several large forester kangaroos. They watch us continuously, ready to flee if alarmed. We move on past a blotched blue-tongued lizard that suns itself on a rock. Nearby, yellow wattle birds feed on the flowers of a banksia tree. When a wattle bird comes too close, the lizard opens its mouth and threatens the bird with its bright tongue. As we near the coast, rainforest gives way to coastal heath and bracken. Dozing beneath a bottle brush tree are several Bennett's wallabies. Their fur is long and thick because Tasmania can get very cold. New Holland honey eaters hang upside down 
probing the flowers for nectar. Suddenly, we hear an animal moving through the brush, hot on the wallaby's trail. Perhaps it is the rare Tasmanian wolf. The species was last seen in the wild in 1930, when a wolf was tracked by a hunter. The wallabies sense the danger and bolt through the undergrowth. We can hear their loud thumps as they hop away. The hidden animal breathes deeply, sniffing the ground for the scent of its prey. Finally, the bushes rustle, and then there is silence. We will never know if this was a Tasmanian wolf. We slowly continue our journey and flush a covey of bronze-winged pigeons. Their wings whistle as they rise into the air. Several Australian fur seals are resting on the beach. They notice us and roll their large brown eyes in our direction. A thick-necked male roars a warning as two females from his harem disappear into the water. As we walk toward the shore, a gusty breeze blows sand in our faces and we smell the salt and seaweed. Australian gannets fly overhead on long tapered wings. Our journey ends at the coastline that encircles this island. With the now distant mountains behind us, we gaze out over the Tasman Sea. In this naturalist field journal, Joyce Pausick really is acting as both a botanist, taking note of all the trees and the flowers and the shrubs and the bush and the brush, and also as a biologist, taking note of all the different animals. And this is her drawing of the evolutionary tree of Tasmanian animals on the left and on the right, a long paragraph about the plant life. This black and white drawing done by Joyce is of the um, cone-shaped Banksia blossom. At the end of her book, Joyce Pausick provides a glossary. These are some of the fancy words that she's used. Some of them you probably know. This word, extinct, you probably know what that means. It's an animal that no longer exists. The Tasmanian wolf um, lived in captivity until 1936. That was the last time anyone's ever seen one. Most people think the Tasmanian wolf is, uh, is extinct now. But there may be words you don't know. This fancy word is marsupial. It's the kind of an animal that carries its young in a pouch, like a wallaby or uh, a kangaroo, or a petamelon, which comes up in the book. And while your big sister, big brother might have learned about the Roaring Twenties in American history, a, a phrase like the Roaring Forties um, refers to strong, wet, westerly winds located between 40 degrees and 50 degrees south latitude. A monotreme is a primitive egg-laying mammal, like the kind that you'll find in Tasmania. Most of Australia's large cities are in the southeast part of the country. So Brisbane, Sydney, um, Canberra, Melbourne, Adelaide. If you know this part of Australia, then you probably know that this island is where this book tastes like. This is Tasmania. If you think you might want to grow up to become a naturalist or a natural scientist or a biologist, this is a great book to go back and look at any given page. You can find in every page an owl at night jar. Well, what must that be? Is that this animal? And then owl at night jar is flying after a large gum moth. Hmm, looks like that might be it. And when the book talks about pygmy possums, can you find them? 
It's fun to go back and identify what you're looking at. A black peppermint tree? That would be this tree. Every page is like that. Some of the animals are harder to find than others. Based on her hike taken long ago from the mountains through the rainforest to the sea, this book has been the field journal of Joyce Pausick. It's called Tasmania, A Wildlife Journey. All of the illustrations and all of the writing were done by Joyce Pausick.